So that's one application of it. So you got the projector, the object, the image, the film is going to be upside down. And then obviously it's going to be projected onto the screen, right side up. It's going to be larger so you can actually see the details of it. It's the same concept. All right, magnifying glass. How does that work? All right, so you take something small and you're able to magnify it. This is going to take us to case number three. All right, so you know for us to be able to magnify something. All right, so you have to uh, place the object within the focal length. All right, so we carry out the first rule, our ray tracing rule number one. And then we end up using the third one. All right, so the ray which is um, directed towards the center of a lens is going to go right through. You notice that in the real space, nothing converges. All right, so we're not going to be able to get the rays to converge on the right-hand side. So what we have to do is now we have to take these uh, refracted rays and then extend them backwards into the virtual space. So in this case, in the case of the lens, the virtual space is what happens in front of the lens. All right, so we will have to extend these. So I'm using green for that. So I'm just going to extend these into the virtual space. And then I'll try to look for a point of convergence that's happening right here. So our rays are converging here in front of the lens. So this space is taken to be the virtual space. So that's what we're looking at. And so the image is going to be upright. It's forming in front of the mirror in the virtual space. So this is a virtual image. It's going to be upright. And it's also going to be larger. So image is virtual. It's upright. It's larger. All right, so that's what we expect to see. All right. So uh, looking at it from this direction, so you will get to see it beyond the uh, lens because this is the real space that you're looking at. The virtual space is what's um, on the other side of a lens, in essence. All right, so hence the reason why things are going to look magnified. All right, so now let's focus on the concave lenses. Once again, the concave lenses will have three rules. Uh, the first one is straightforward, so the array, which is parallel to the optical axis upon refraction. This is gonna diverge as if it's coming from the focal point. Rule number two, we'll say the wave which is pointing towards the focal point upon refraction is gonna get refracted parallel to the optical axis. And we got the rule number three, ray which is directed towards the center of a lens is gonna go right through. All right, so we got three ray tracing rules that we will follow. All right, so the ray parallel upon refraction is going to move in such a direction that when you extend the refracted ray, it's going to go right through the focal point. Rule number two, ray, which is directed towards the focal point upon refraction, is going to go parallel to the optical axis. And ray tracing number three, uh, ray, which is directed towards the center of the lens upon refraction, will go right through it. All right, now we can discuss why the image looks smaller if you're using a divergent lens. Okay, so we will get to use the ray tracing rules to figure out what happens to the uh, refracted rays. All right, so we will place the object right up front. All right, so that's the object that we're viewing. All right, so this is rule number one. Um, this ray is gonna move in a direction as if it's originating from the focal point on the left. So it's gonna diverge. This gets refracted and diverges. The ray which is directed towards the center is gonna go right through all right, immediately we find a point of convergence in front, all right, so in front of the lens, so it's going to be right there. So it's going to be in the virtual space. And remember, real space is here, and you're looking from that direction. So it's going to look virtual. It's going to be upright. It's going to be smaller, and it's also going to be virtual. So in this, this virtual, it's going to be upright. It's going to be smaller. All right, so by looking at it from that direction, if you're looking through the lens, you will get to see a virtual image, and it's going to be smaller. So a divergent lens. Problem number five is another problem that you have to do on your own. So that's, once again, your homework. Let's talk about telescopes and microscopes. All right, so studying the stars nearly cost a great scientist his life. From the History Channel, the official network of every millennium, this is Time Lab 2000. In 1610, scientist Galileo Galilei builds the most powerful telescope of his day. Pretty incredible considering he's never actually seen one, only heard about it. Then Galileo makes a simple gesture that forever changes the course of history. He tilts his telescope up to the heavens and observes stars, planets, and the moon in greater detail than anyone has ever seen them. Remarkably, it nearly kills him. His observations convince him that the Earth moves around the sun. The church insists that the universe revolves around the Earth and tries Galileo for heresy. To avoid execution, he must publicly deny his greatest discovery. For the History Channel, I'm Sam Waterston. Let's talk about telescopes. How do they work? 
so we're dealing with the lenses of com lenses in combination refracting telescope so we're going to end up using lenses obviously so that's the reason why it's called a refracting telescope the simplest telescope that you can come up with is going to involve only two lenses believe it or not i noticed that you have two convex lenses and this is the second one is going to become your eyepiece the first one is just an objective that's what they say so that's the term that we will get to use all right so it's got its focal points located fairly close to the lens number one and lens number two is going to have its focal points as well it's a little bit further away that we're looking at so um so this becomes a telescope so we can actually try to magnify a star a distance distant object so this is going to be our star it's going to be obviously quite a bit away all right and now what's going to happen is uh, the image is going to form using the ray tracing rules all right so we end up forming the image i'm trying to adjust this just right okay so all right so i end up using the rules all right so what's happening is they image is going to be inverted in this case so it's going to be small it's going to be inverted it's happening on this side so this is going to be a real image that we're looking at and notice that this real image that we just formed is formed within the focal uh length of the eyepiece all right so because it's forming within the focal length of the eyepiece and this is a real image what's going to happen is um it's going to end up creating a virtual image in the virtual space that we're looking at so once again we use the ray tracing rules so the first image is real obviously all right, so once again, we will apply the ray tracing rule. So this is rule number one. And you know, the image is, everything is gonna be diverging on the side. So we will extend this into the virtual space. We will extend the refracted ray into the virtual space. And we'll imply, we use another uh, rule. Uh, so the one which is directed towards the center is gonna go right through. All right, so refracted rays do not converge to a point here. So we'll have to extend into the virtual space and look for a point of convergence. And notice that they will converge in the virtual space, the point of convergence is here. And notice that the image is gonna be magnified. It's gonna be inverted, it's gonna be magnified, it's gonna be larger. So this worked out. So I'm just disconnecting this, implying that this object is further away and starts at what years away, as you will know. All right, so I'm making this into a virtual image. So that's the final image, it's gonna be virtual, it's inverted, it's larger, and it worked out. All right, so that's how the telescopes work. Right, so you got the distant object, you got the objective, and and you got the eyepiece and the first image is going to be real and it's going to end up forming within the focal length of the eyepiece and because the image real image forms within the focal length of the eyes eyepiece uh the image of the real image is going to be virtual it's going to be larger and blah blah all right so that's how it works all right now let's take a look at a compound microscope it's the same idea you could just build one using two lenses all right, so the first one is once again, is your objective. The second one is your eyepiece. Um, so you got the focal points of the objective and you got the focal points of the eyepiece. Uh, this time the object is located fairly close to the focal point, which means that the object is probably gonna be located um, within the radius of curvature of the focal point. All right, so I'm trying to, all right, let's get back. Trying to get a point of convergence here. Mm, I didn't like that one. So I'm getting a second eyepiece uh, with a larger focal, focal length. And then I move the objects a little further away. And once again, I'm making sure that I get a real image, which is going to be inverted within this space. And hopefully it's going to be larger. All right, so that's what I end up getting. So now this is a real image. So this is upside down, obviously. And this is also happening within the focal length of the eyepiece. So it's going to give us a virtual image at the end when you do the ray, ray tracing. So first image is real, just as we expected. So once again, we follow the ray tracing rules, just like the way we did it in the telescope. All right, so extend the refracted rays into the virtual space in the opposite direction. And find a point of convergence. And then when you find a point of convergence, just like in the telescope, so it's going to be upside down. It's going to be virtual and it's going to be larger. And it worked out beautifully. All right, so the only difference is the location of the object here. The location of the object is very close to their focal length. In the case of the stars, obviously they're way outside. So either way, it works on the same principles.